All right, insert it into a random unboxing because I'm not gonna make this a whole video. Maybe I should. If I make this a video on the secondary channel, we'll decide later. Anyway, so, um, I forget which amp it came with. I think I got it from the guy, the guy who ordered the benchmark amp, the big benchmark amp. He ordered a cable from Double Helix, which is quite an expensive cable maker. Like Double Helix cables are like, aha, ah, joke, joke, anime level, fucking funny time audiophile costs. And he contacted them, said he was sending his amp to me. He was getting a cable and he told them that I would like a cable and they just comped me a cable for free. And it was silver with the beautiful connectors and the spades and it was so I can wire headphones into the back terminals of the big, you know, benchmark $3,000 amplifier. And I still have that cable. They, they said, here you go. Anytime you want a cable, just ask for it. So I've got an in with double helix. Great. However, um, I want to make a couple changes to the kind of, I want to make another one of those cables because I've currently got that cable permanently in use in my office. It's got, it's hooked up to the VMVA1 class A-ish amplifier and that's going into the balance connector which is going into the Argon T60s and it's never changing. So what I did was I bought two uh, much less nice, because I think, I think, I think, what's it called? I think Double Helix makes their own, uh, has them all, their own machined. I bought some Neutrix um, four pin females. So this is not the side you get on your headphone, it's the exact opposite side. And I'm going to put speaker wires in here for one of them. I'm going to build one of these. It comes in three parts. That pulls out. Pull this out. So basically you get the end cap strain relief. You get the wire squeezy squeeze. I have no idea what the real names of these are. Here's the actual pin assembly we're gonna be soldering to it. I should have brought a fucking helping hands up and here's the shield that everything mounts to and slides into. So I'm gonna have to figure out, I need to go back down the basement apparently because I need a set of helping hands because I'm gonna solder. Oh God, my iced tea. Oh geez, I'm the worst at this whole work thing. Ideally, this would be on that side where my right dominant hand is, but unfortunately, there's only one plug in this fucking nine foot island. This island is nine feet wide. And they were like, nah, one plug on one side is fine. So one of my future to-do lists is gonna be add an outlet to that side of it as well. Maybe even into the front here. If I'm going with outlets, I'll put one under here and one over there. I'll add two outlets to this fucking island because I can't solder left-handed and I can't, unless I got an extension cord to run it all the way around, it's whatever. Anyway, I like square glasses. I don't know if I had this from my old apartment. It didn't come with the house, but I just like a square glass. <sighs> don't you love how fucking absurd I am? So I, I got a two pack of these Nutrix for 10 bucks. And if I don't lose any of the parts, what I can do now before I go down the basement, um, I'm gonna be using a mica cable. Mica cables, your micro speaker cables, this is a, a six footer. So I'm basically gonna cut this in half and make a single three foot extension to go from the back of a speaker amp to a female balance connector. Um, in most speaker amps, the ground terminals, the negative terminals are all together. They're, they're shorted. They're just one ground bus. So you can legitimately hook up a grounded headphone to it, but so for some reason they don't. Or most places that put a headphone jack on an amp don't do that. They always put single-ended. And I'm just like, you can put like balanced, it won't be balanced, but all, head, all speaker amps are essentially balanced internally regardless. So I'm gonna line those up, come down as hard as I can to kink this, not to kink shame it, and I'm gonna cut it in half using these cutters that I got on Amazon, five pack of these for like $25, which is, these are amazing. Amazingly sharp, and I'll throw those up there. And we'll double check the length. I mean, I, like there's a real bad kink here, but that shouldn't affect it once I start stripping wires, which I will be doing with my Vice Grips Irwin Vice Grip cable stripper. It's important that these are the same lengths for sanity, for my sanity, and I can see they're, are they? All right, so there's perfect. There's perfectly the same length. If I slide my hands down without any, if you don't need to make it this OCD, you don't have to, but I'm, I'm, I'm gonna. See, like, I can get down like this far and then ignore the rest of it and hold it here and then get down like, we're starting to get weird twists in the wire. Get down that far and then ignore the rest. There we go. We're starting, we're starting to get it now. 
my OCD. I don't want to be showing you this, but I'm going to show you it. So there, 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 there. Yeah, we're about five eighths of an inch off. So I'm going to cut this. I'm going to cut you, bro. Does that have a cutter on it? Probably not a good one. Yeah, I have to do this in two because this is very sharp, but it's also not very long. So now we have two identical lengths. Split them apart. I love these mica cables because they're so soft. They are pure copper, 14 gauge. Like you see, you can see how flexible they are. It's great. Throw that in the trash, which I'm not going to be able to make it, am I? Okay, so before I strip these, because as soon as you strip them, then the wire is sticking out, then you know you're going to catch it on something and it's going to be all fucked up. So I'm just going to leave them for now. We ha also have to put wires through, through the back of this. I have to modify the back of this. This is designed for like a very small single wire. Like this will go in here fine. Look at this. Ooh, beautiful. Now I got to put four of those in there. So let me go get a helping hands and maybe some heat shrink and I'll be right back. Mm, tell you what. So I've got this now. Um, I looked up the pin layout for XLR, even though I sure I know this in my sleep. And if we look at the very, very front, the back label too, the back is also labeled, but it's impo I have perfect vision and it's hard for me to see it. So the front is labeled one, two, three, four. And according to this, pin one is left positive, uh, pin two is left negative, right is pin three positive, and four is pin right negative. So at least we'll know how to do it. Because I mean, I could literally solder any of these and then just pick where I'm gonna plug it, but these are labeled positive and negative. I just have to label which is left and right. I brought up um, some black heat shrink. I'll have to do some some other sort of markings to say what's left and right because if I leave them like to this it'll be fine but I might strip them all and then do a weave do a four wire weave so it's a very nice thing that goes to the back I've done I think eight wire weaves which was nuts but um but um Tish so let's open this up we have to be able to make sure we see so actually you know what I'm gonna do I'm gonna be smart I'm finally learning to be smart it's gonna be great being smart is great uh white pen Marker is too thick. Let's let's do this first because I know once I have this in the grip, I'm not gonna be able to read anything. So this is pin one, and instead of actually marking it one, two, three, four, I'm just gonna write what it is. So this is gonna be a piece of paper or my hand to get the marker going. This is uh, all right. Guess what? I lied. Hello. All right. Here's L. L. Positive. See, look at that. That's L positive because that's one. So then it's going to be L negative, and then was three right positive. So I really wanted to mark L and R. So I do positive, and then come on. There's negative, and then this one will be R positive. So I won't mark the letter next to what it is, and that's just negative. So L positive, negative, R positive, negative. So now I don't fuck it up. I don't even have to look at this anymore. Thank you. Ooh, wah, ah, ah. So I'm going to twist my helping hands. Limp Bizkit's best, best band in history, I know. Um, if you look at the end of these connectors, which I'm not sure if the GoPro can see it since the GoPro is not. Well, I'll pull off my head and see if you can see it. Um, these have like a slight like they're half cut, like half mooned, and there's an actual hole down there. So we should be able to get this gauge wire, I think, into there, or at least have a pool of solder to melt, to melt again. I set the 625 on this, which I just looked up and I had it way too high. Like eight for some reason. So there, now we know what we're soldering, where we're soldering it, and when we're soldering it. And I'm probably gonna come across, we'll figure that out. But I got some soldering paste, I've got some regular old solder, not lead free, because it contains lead, which is known to the state of California to cause everything bad. Before we do any of that though, um, I just wanna get, yeah, yeah, I need to get this onto this somehow, because I'm not gonna have any braid going into it, so everything's gonna be done afterwards. So I need to get this hole big enough. And this is pretty soft, this hole back. I'm just gonna try to cut off as little bit, as little of it as I can in like a concentric circle to give us the most entry 
I'm turning this tight curl into a slut. There we go. Ah, we got a big hole and that one fell on the floor. So now these, and I guess I could pick left and right after the board afterwards, as long as I have the pairs together. Holy shit, this is tight. This is only two of them and it's fucking tight. All right, I may have to um, get some lube and I'm not joking. Not like lubed among us joking, like lube lube. Because I don't want to cut this, I could cut this a little further, I may have to cut this a little further back. Is this, see it's not even worth it cutting it further back because it's not conical. This tube in here is not, doesn't flare out like I can make it bigger. It's solid all the way to like here and then it gets bigger. So I'm gonna see if I can lube that. I'll cut this a little straighter while I'm doing things. Yeah, these, these XLRs are not designed for a 14 gauge speaker wire. Um, I can ream it out a little bit with my finger. I think I'm just gonna try some dish soap. Just a touch of it. Just something that I can just rinse off after I'm done. Since we're gonna slide this down the wire, I don't wanna do anything oil-based. Yeah, she heard me say lubed among us. Let's see what she has to offer in the way of, it's a felony to kill yourself with a gun. I did not know that. Who's gonna convict you? Wow, apparently it's a six month in, in jails. Um, I don't understand, I don't understand. <laughs> I mean, I guess, what if you failed? Do they then arrest you? So I'm not sure if you do two at a time or all four at once. Or, or if the smarter move is to go inside out. Mm, no way, because these connectors are bigger. This is gonna be a tough, this is a tough nut, literally a tough nut to, to both crack and penetrate. Inflation. All right. If I tape them together, it's gonna make it even harder. All right, let's go with, let's, let's go with our lube. I also don't wanna get soap on my fingers so I have strength to push in. So I'm gonna try to, oh, there we go. And I'll take one lead and I'll just like spin it around. Oh, baby. Baby, I told you we didn't need no lube. Get the get the bends in the same orientation. Fuck, this is gonna, this is the hardest part of the fucking soldering effort right here. Oh, the two of them are going in nice and easy now. Look, look at that. Oh yeah, this is, this girl's ready to go. See now what I may have to do, because I having all four of them be the same length makes this hard. If I have two of them shorter, I get them through and then cut them all shorter and then it might work. Because I don't think I'm gonna be able to do all four four simultaneously. All right, now here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take one lead on each side and make it shorter. And then we'll just cut back to that later on. So I can get one started by like a half inch then get the other one started. So here we do this. This is how it must work in gangbangs. All right, so we got two in there, look beautiful. And now we have these other two guys and they come along and they're like, wait a second, I thought you needed your pipes cleaned and then this guy will come in. And he'll be like, wow, this is going to be fucking impossible with four. And my fingers are starting to be slippery because I fucked up. All right, so there's three. There's three. Can I get three to penetrate a little further? Come on, you bitch. Oh, man. There's no fucking way I'm getting four in here. I'd love to get four in here. Oh, no, I can't even slide three up. We're going to have to modify this greatly. I'm gonna have to cut this way back and then just use heat shrink. I don't like using heat shrink that far up because if we get any too far up, this is where this sits and does the, the pressure thing. So there is a wall here that this has to push against and then clamp down, which I may not even be able to use this in all honesty. Because it's, again, it's designed for a much smaller amount of wire. So let's just cut. Let me see how far down that goes. We're gonna go right to where these these are, since that's a marking, and I could rinse this out, but I'm not going to, because I like cutting things while my hands are very slippery. We'll have to go around in a couple times. There we go, now we can get our real nice, tight, close quarters. We're basically removing the entire uh, entirety of the rubber and just getting right to the hard plastic. Yeah, so there's our hard plastic. 
So even though we cut off that much of it, we still have about a quarter inch or seven or eight centimeters that is just super fucking tizzite. Oh shit. Um, I can't cut away the shielding on the cables or it'll ground out. Unless I cut away the thick shielding on the cable. Like there, two is fine. Two is, two is peachy. And three might be possible. I might have to, wow, this is, this might get real weird. I might have to separate and do top and bottom. Cause here's like the third one. Oh man. So, you know, my hands are slippery and this is too much. All right, you know what? New plan on this whole thing. I'm gonna use a stepped bit here I was thinking about putting in the drill press, but I feel like I don't need a drill press if I have a vise, even though this vise is not attached to the table, but it's heavy as fuck. It's a fireball tool vise. I'm going to just gent gently clamp, because I don't want to crack anything. It is all plastic. And I'm just going to just try to ream this out slowly. Oh, there's one. Oh, the whole thing's spinning now. So apparently, What we've done is we've detached. Oh, I was grabbing onto this. This is just a beauty ring. It's a Nutrix ring that says Nutrix on it. Let's get rid of that. Okay, so now we can actually grab the thing and I'm gonna put it on the very, very side or in the very, very top because it's not gonna make a damn bit of difference. Gentle, gentle grip. Ooh, we walked it out. I'm trying to be gentle with this so it doesn't deform, but I don't know if that's going to be possible. We have taken away some material, though. I don't think we can go from the middle now. All right, I'm going to grab it from the larger end. I'm going to give it a little bit more clamp than before. And I'm going to go faster and then slower descent. We have definitely made a bigger hole. I'm gonna to try to go one more notch. I think we're bigger. I should have brought down the other connector. Oh, it's hard to see, lighting down here sucks. Eventually I'll have the lighting down here sorted out. Okay, if we can just get rid of, I'm gonna go with a solid drill bit now check with the back see that fits so that's not going to help us we need a larger one but i think the half inch one might be too much larger that's oof although that does fit this way mm, no that's too big half inch is too fucking big all right let's try we'll try to go one more step and then I'll go back upstairs if I have to I come back down here and do a little more murder just a little more murder or I can just leave this part off all together and I'll fuck the whole thing up well there was we're at the la the second to last step and I think Ooh, it's so tight so tight do I have a reamer don't answer that where the hell did all the, oh, these are upstairs in the fucking thing. I don't think I have the type of reamer that I would need. Ooh, maybe I do. This is kind of what I need. I wish it was a straight reamer, but we'll take this one. Don't melt my drawer, please. Too much. Getting used to this drill and its speed controls. My Bosch had a much gentler, like forward. Forward would be nice and gentle, forward. When I make my Bosch go, it's like, mm, this is like too much. Do this by hand. Actually, that, that's pretty much the perfect size we need. No. It is going in. See if I can fit it through this way. Nope. It 
definitely feel the plastic heating up though, I can tell you that much. We are almost perfect. I really should have just brought the rest of this down and screwed it together because I would have had a metal head. There we go. So we've officially hollowed this out to the point of like, there's barely any original size of the material left. Good, good, good. Take our beauty ring back. Go back upstairs. I realized to shut off the soldering iron because I was preemptively like 20 minutes early. Oh, like a hot dog down the hallway. That's all four of them, look at that. Your mama's a slut. I don't need soap anymore, thank you. We get to cut these back down to the original length. Actually, I'm gonna rinse them off a little bit because there's still soap on these girls. You're gonna strip them anyway, so getting them a little bit wet is not the end of the world. I'm gonna slide this way down here. Actually, I need to slide. Double check you have it in the right direction because a lot of times you'd be amazed how many times I put things on and it's like, yes, yeah, slid it on. Oh, backwards. Yes, yeah, slid it on backwards. So the beauty ring, the Nutrix labeling ring goes here first. I could have put it on before. I did not. Twitch fam. There we go. Now it says Nitrix. Here's what our ends are. Uh, left and right doesn't matter until we know what we're soldering to. We still need to dry this off a little bit and cut our lengths, which the short ones, the long ones are correct and the short ones should be close. So we'll get the long ones straightened out and then cut to match. One, two, okay, we're back to having four identical length wires. All the shit we had to cut off. Now, I'm gonna use, we don't need much. We only need like half a centimeter. I'm trying to work and talk in metric because there's a lot of Europeans who follow my channels. If you're European, raise your hand. Um, but to America in freedom units, yeah, it's a less than a quarter inch. I don't know, I feel like Americans have a better concept of fractions. Let me slide this over. Um, if you never use one of these tools, and when they work, they're amazing. When they don't work, it's annoying as fuck. You stick it in there, you go squeezy squeeze, and then it should pull. Now this is very soft material, so I wanna see if it'll... <laughs> yeah, no, that didn't work. If you do one at a time, sometimes it works way better. Hold on. Nope. See, what it does is it grabs and then strips and pulls apart. It works amazingly on Cat5 cable. Not so much on much more delicate uh, wires like this. I'll have to actually go get a stripper from downstairs again. Yeah, no. back to the basement. Ugh. So, I'm trying not to throw away too much of this wire. I want it to be as long as possible. I do have, tw one of the beautiful things about using a speaker amp and speaker wire is you can make it like 100 feet long. You'll have no degradation for the sort of amplification we're trying to pull here. That's the 10 gauge strip. These are not 10 gauge wires, I think. 10, 12, wait a second, that's smaller. That's 12, that, I can't tell what that is anymore. That's 14, I know we're supposed to be there. But this has got such large insulation. You squeeze it and then you sort of like rock it around in a circle to cut it and you pull it off and it sometimes gets it all the way and sometimes doesn't, you go back. That's actually the right length, this little short guy. But again, it's so thick, the insulation is so thick. How thick is it, Zios? It's so thick that they're gonna get in the way of each other back here, trying to get these things to like get close. So I'm gonna give these a little twist. Hands are clean, because I had to wash the soap off. We made, there was actually a center insulation. There's this outer thick insulation, and if you could see it here, this is clear bit. I might try to expose the clear insulation. I'd have to probably do that manually. Let me see, hold on. Give this just like a little, a little, you know, you gotta squeeze this till you think you're maybe cutting it, and then slide it off. Yeah, like that. 
So I don't think I exposed any copper. So yeah, now I've got the thick insulation and the thin insulation. Let's see if I could do that on all four. You gotta squeeze till you just feel it giving way and you can't let it go through too far. I think you gotta rip it. Just cut the outside insulation. I think I got it. Yeah, come on. There we go. So now I've got the copper, the inside insulation, and the outside insulation. So I'm gonna to try to do the same thing on this side again. Trying to make it balanced. If one side is longer than the other, it won't be the end of the world. I mean, yes, it will be the end of the world. So I'll do this like I did before, all the way to the core. And then I'll manually cut the rest of it. See, this one didn't cut. I'll leave that on there for a second. Just a gentle feel. Bent the fucking copper on that one and dropped the wire. Okay, we're just gonna give it a little. Okay. I recommend you do that with very, very sharp cutters. Those are brand new, so. So now I'll come back in here. Okay, so now we've got about a quarter inch of copper showing and then about a quarter inch of inside insulation and then about the two and a half, well actually these were six foot lengths. That's not quite three feet, so maybe 32 inches of that left. Let's see what Twitch fam is. Oh dear Lord, what are you up to now? Just make them confused, make everyone in Twitch fam confused. So now, um, this is where I diverge because I actually don't know anything. So you might want to actually consult someone who knows how to solder for the rest of this. These are slightly longer than those. I don't think it's going to be a super problem. I'd like to cut them shorter, but I think I'll tin them first. Um, tinning wires is just a matter of putting solder on the actual, look at that, we can now turn this on. I love this one because it literally tells you when it's at temperature. It's set to 625, it's at 130, 40, 60, 70, 200 degrees, 250 degrees. 300 degrees and as you're soldering if you are you know using a lot of heat to heat up material it will show you it's going down and show you a little indicator when the actual heating element is on so it's a very nice soldering iron i think i paid 90 dollars for that several years ago before i moved out of new york that was like my like i need to become an adult i'm gonna buy a good soldering iron tip is clean we've got the little thing in there e so what I would basically do to yee this, I would yee some of this into this red paste, which also causes cancer in California because everything does. And then you're supposed to heat up the wire and then melt the solder. That's the way you're supposed to do it. I can never heat up the wire without it fucking up the entire material. So what I usually do is just touch the wire and then touch the solder and then it will just melt onto it. There we go. We're just, we're just tinning this for now. You can, you can like fill up the soldering tip. There, that is officially tinned. Do it again. Keep in mind the fumes from this will actually kill you after several years. Luckily I'm only a hobby solderist and not like a full soldering man, solderman. Is that a thing? Are soldermen a thing? Just a little touch of that. Red goo, very, very Evangelion. So heat up, melt the red goo, and then feed the solder wick into it. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Touch the bottom, heat the red goo. Come on. The flux, I guess we should call it flux. This is actually flux core rosin, flux core solder, and I'm using more flux. I don't know, I've always needed more flux. I, I, give, a, I give a fluck, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Wipe that off. Okay, so now, uh, which are the ones that were too long? Just just barely too long, just barely. And I'm gonna take the good cutters and without, because when you cut this, it's gonna end up on your floor and when it ends up on your floor, you're gonna step on it and it's gonna penetrate your foot because it's so fucking, look how uneven this got. Like these are completely uneven. That one's gonna have to come off that much just to make that one the same length. How did that happen? Shrinkage? 
That's wild. All right, well, I'm gonna cut this. This this one that's too long, I'm gonna cut short first. Did you hear it? It went somewhere else. I'm gonna cut this one to match it, even though it's gonna basically mean we have no, that one fell off because it was huge. Now we have no exposed bit, so I'm gonna have to restrip that, and that means I'm gonna have to re-tin it because I basically cut the entire amount that I tinned off pull off these stragglers please if you're an actual person who solders do not watch this part of the video it's just you know how to solder don't don't, don't. this is for people who are very dumb we're all very dumb if you're watching this very very dumb okay I'll try to strip back a little bit more of this og in slee See, it's, it, the problem is now this insulation is hot from me soldering on it. So it's softer, so cutting it makes it more difficult. It's more squishy. Like hard, I think putting the wire in the freezer would make that easier, but I think we've got our four pretty samey looking connectors. I, I, I hesitate to even test this, this again. Uh, again, this would be a great place to have just tape. Just tape down the whole length to make sure we have the right length. There we go. How bad are we? Oh my God, we're so far off. How are we so far off? How, how did that happen? How did, how did it happen like that? Uh, you know what, I'm gonna leave it. You know what, I'm gonna leave it. Cause we've got at least this, this, this one is longer than the other. So that means when I, these are the same length, one will be shorter at the end. That'll both indicate left and right. And unless I'm coming directly over the top of an amp, I'm usually gonna be going to the left or the right of an amp. So the two wires will be, it's, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fuck. It's fucking not fine, but I'm doing it any fuck. So let's see if I line this up. How hard can it be? How hard can it be? H H C I B. How hard can it be? All right, that's a little better. It's, fuck, it's still off. I don't care, I'm going. We can always make a second one. I have that second connector in the bag and I have plenty of these mica cables. They're not that expensive. So I guess we'll go with the right channel first. Uh, which way can I hold this? See, the way the wire wants to hold in my hand is right side to the right, which is not what we want for that. We'd have to come around this way if I don't want to do a weird because forcing the wire to be the other direction is gonna be annoying. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to drop that. We're gonna cut off a piece of this solder. We're going to dip it in our red goo. We're gonna come here. We're gonna hold onto this and see if it'll hot, get hot enough to make this a, 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 a solder pool. Come on. There. We're basically filling these things with with solder. Our wires are still too big to go in there. Like these again are expecting small wires. But if they're filled with solder and I put it to the end of it, and go, it'll just stick. I love doing that. I love doing that. Get the fucking smoke out of my eyes. So once this is filled with at least a good amount of solder, I may have gone overboard with that very first one. I have a solder sucker there, so if I need to remove solder, I can. Okay, so now we've got solder in our holes, solder on our wires. We have to figure out, okay, this has to go over the top. This also has to get the wire put over it. Right? This is the actual tip. The tip is gonna recede into this, which means we have to go, because that's the back. I, there's no way I'm being able to use this. I'm just gonna ignore that completely. So we're gonna put this over here. I can't drill this out, this is metal, so we have to just get this to fit. It should be big enough. There's two there, two here. There's just this piece in the middle that has to be dealt with, and I should have obviously dealt with that before. We are really just, the outside insulation is just super soft and mo mo movable. Let's see. Just have to get it like I need like a, a thin, like you know what helped me like right now a screwdriver. I just need to push this through. 
and just move that insulation just the smallest little bit through the gap. There we go. Okay. So at least I know this will still function in society. In a society, I would have kicked myself real hard trying to get everything else on this. So now that'll slide up. This is going to slide our thing into it. And now all we have to do is keep these separated left and right, and we'll work out which one's which later. I should have marked, what I should have done, or actually I could still do now, is just take this thing and mark two of these wires, just whatever two, it doesn't fucking matter. This one. Is this one, is this one, is this one. We can wipe this off later if we wanted to. So at least now I know the positive and negatives on one of them. And even if we took them apart and braided them, as long as I know I soldered the ones that are marked right, the marked ones are right, Just making a statement. As long as I know the marked ones are right, then I could braid the whole thing. And the two that are down there, there's a positive and a negative that are marked. And I know even if I braid them, which one is hot and negative. It's, it's still gonna be a bitch about this. I wanna come in from this side and I wanna bend these a little bit. Okay, we're gonna try to do, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold to the back of this and see if we can melt all the solder. Where did all the solder go? Where did all the solder go? Oh God, this wire is fucking killing me. The whole side of this thing is being on is killing me. I could have done this in the basement, but I like up here. I bought the house to have like the house. Yeah, no, this would have to take like a much smaller gauge wire. I don't want to use small gauge wire. I want it to be mica cables. I'm obsessed. I love mica cables. <sighs> Once you've made a soldered end like this, you could legitimately snip it and cut it into a wedge and maybe try to make the be less material. That's way too much solder on this one. Hold on. Also, don't make sure these don't bridge because you're going to be doing that to your goddamn amplifier. I have to remove some solder. If I fuck this up enough, there we go. It's definitely trying to bridge the connection between the two. I'll get my multimeter out and make sure there's no contacts being formed because that would be extra bad. It's trying to putting an extra thick wire on an extra not thick fucking unit. And I, I, mm, I want to do it like this, because look how nice this, this wire is helping me, but it has to be the other way around, which I could probably separate this a little bit more to help me. All right, just do a fucking naive twist. Maybe this other side will just be better. Yeah, this will this will work fine. These tips are so fucking, another reason to do this in the basement just taking off the square edges off these tips. Now that I've soldered them or tinned them, give me a little bit more of an arrow shape, like a needle. Okay. There we go. Now we actually have something showing. Give me some of this solder. Come on, melt into this fucking hole, you bitch. That almost stuck. That almost stuck. I think I removed too much material now. So now I, I, I use a solder bulb and I pulled everything off. The other problem I concern myself with Oh, we're starting to melt it in. All right. That's attached, but not great. The other problem I concern myself with is if you hold on to a connector long enough, you're starting to heat that whole piece of metal up and it's in plastic and it'll start warping and fucking up and maybe you plug this in and nothing works. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna record all my failings right now because that's annoying. Let me get these four soldered in and then we'll fucking continue. Fuck.
All right, after screaming loudly into this echoey house that I fucking hate soldering, which I do, I don't enjoy this at all. I'm happy that I, I have the confidence to do it, but I'm not. I realized after I attached it perfectly to take it all off, because you see the part that we have to slide up has to go up a certain orientation and the wires are so tight between these, this fucking brick here, the nose brick, that it was. So um, I had to, I did it all, it was perfect. It was perfect as I can get it to go and it was pretty ugly considering how bad I am at soldering. And then I had to undo it all because I'm stupid. Because this has to go into this a certain way so that it avoids the lock and the chalk here lines up. And when we stuck the wires through, and I'm blaming you for this because I said we, um, it was this way. The, the wires are coming through these holes in a way that it would just, it simply would, wait a second. I'm even more dumb. I'm, I mean, I'm even more dumb. Holy fuck, I'm even more dumb. I just realized how dumb I am. This goes on from the front. This doesn't have to be on the wire. Wow, I am even more dumb than I thought I was. Well, I had to unsolder it to get it off anyway, so now it's off. So now let's go put that back on, and I've realized something I don't like. These helping hands are the most fucking annoying thing now because they don't weigh anything, so I can't push any weight against it. Because I need to sort of like press it in there, and it just keeps moving. So at one point I was soldering like against my chest. I'm like, that's not good for my clothing or anything. So, I mean, I'm not gonna go and try to find a fucking big heavy block to screw that helping hands into, but it wouldn't fucking hurt. Fucking, this is, this is what, this is what the teacher was telling me about. I can't stay on task. I need that helping hand to not annoy me. So this is what drives men. It was that one video on TikTok where the guy was talking about nothing. Men desire nothing. We want to go go to work. When we come home, we want to do nothing. And I I didn't know I agreed with that till I heard that opinion. Eyeball lock there. Put this over till I see it. That's that's as centered as I ever needed to be. Um, so what I'm doing now is something to try to make it so that next time I do this, I could get it over with quicker and then do nothing. Isn't that a great like concept? I want to just do nothing. Once I've accomplished everything, I could do nothing. I need to accomplish everything before I can do nothing, though. So that's why we work. That's why we all work. And I found these really small little threaded bastards. And these are, oh, they're gonna be fucking perfection. I can't believe I found these. Like nice uh, flared heads. So now I gotta find a drill bit that's exactly the right size so that the threads in this will still work. That should be that one. If it's not that one, it's the one above it, not the one below it. You can always make holes bigger. It's very hard to make holes smaller. That's why you don't date the school slut. I don't know. You can actually, the school slut is probably a really nice girl. Sometimes a hot dog down the hallway is what you desire. Uh, I don't want to drill into my vice, although I don't think that's going to be physically possible. Very slow to start so we don't walk. There's one. I like cutting board. Because you literally, that's your, that's your, instead of like sawdust, you just get little spools. Um, Why well, am I using cutting board, not wood? Because a cutting board will last forever. If you're cutting meat on this, you'd have like six years maybe. But since I'm going to be using it to hold a, a thing, it'll last for fucking ever. I've got cutting board as the, as the center console to my car, which has been in the sun for three years before I moved to a house with a garage. And it hasn't warped or twisted or faded or anything. It just, it just is. Cutting board just exists and be hit with knives all day. That's its job. I want to be hit with a knife all day. So now we just going to make sure these will thread in here. Well, it's a little tight. I can give it a go. We'll give it a go. So let's mount our mofo. Everything here rotates, so it doesn't really matter what orientation. We do want to loosen this up so we can get to all the holes, however. So. Does, does it have a cutting head? This actually has a cutting head to it. This is like the ideal fucking bolt. 
and it should auto thread into this. I'll get it off the top of that and put on something flat. Scoozy tools. Oh, where are the other two I pulled out? I have a hand screwdriver to start this with. Pointy sticks are here. Anything that's a pointy stick. My oldest screwdriver. Built my first computer with this and every subsequent screwdriver. Actually, I might be able to just screw it in with this screwdriver. And in fact, this this screw has a quarter as a uh, number two square head. Uh, like in the center, so I don't even have to use Phillips if I don't feel like it. Oh yeah, we're cutting nice. There's one. Don't tighten it all the way. Just get it so it's snug. Because if you pull that one down, the rest of them won't line up. Go down soft and then hard on all three. I can feel it wanting to slip, so I'm going to remove that. Switch to a number two square tip, and then continue. Oh, apparently it's not a number two. It's one of those, like, weird number ones that's not quite a square head. Do I have a number one square? I don't think I do. I think I have a number one square, but I think this is one of those, like, number zero Phillips. I'll just give a little more pressure. And then we skip. It's down. And then we skip. Okay. Slight distraction. But now at least this thing won't hopefully fuck me over like it's been trying to do the entire time. Actually, I'm gonna add some uh, some rubber feet to the bottom of this and then we'll be good. I'm glad I'm putting this on the second channel. This was just supposed to be like a five minute thing. Rubber feet exist in here. The Velcro. Oh wait, we could do those. How much do I love these? Because I can totally do the sound rise silicone feet, which are like $20 a pair or a set. Yeah, I'll contact sound rise and be like, send me more of those. So. Uh, I'm gonna, if I do the four corners, it's a big spance, and I'll be pushing in the middle. I can bring it in a little bit. I could do one in the center and then four around it. I have to find another set of these. Mm, but then it's on, on uneven surfaces, it'll be fucked. We're just gonna do the corners and we'll see how it goes. I could always add a fifth one to the center. Now, you don't have to watch this. I've always found that if you used cutting board instead of wood because this is a wood project i gotta take in a piece of wood and put this on wood and it'd been wood but it'll always be wood it'll always look like you just half-assed it and shoved it on a piece of wood piece of plastic like this it's just it's so nice the edges got texture on it i was thinking that now i could add like a holder for the spool i can make this my soldering station i have a little just a bolt we gotta because it's self lock a self-locking nut, if you ever buy a nut that screws on and self-locks, it's just a piece of cutting board material. It's a washer in there that you thread onto. So you do like that. You drill the right hole and you thread a fucking machine bolt into it and it goes and it stays there forever, never unscrewing. Because it'll just melt and spread apart. Yeah, those silicone feet are nice and audiophile. Great. So now. It actually brings the surface up a little bit, and I could even hold it against my chest and put, like if I needed to go like this, I could actually apply pressure and it will be against me, but I shouldn't have to do that now. All right, so back to, and actually this is the oldest part of the whole project is this, because I actually have a nut in there when it's broke, it, the, the slip thing went off, so I put a nut in there, so I can't actually close the jaws all the way, they stop about an eighth of an inch away. Um, back to what the fuck I was doing. So now, this is the only part that has to be on here. Thank God. Let me make doubly sure that no wires are crisscrossing because this is perfectly fucking fit. The biggest problem is gonna be if these wires, like I had reversed a set of wires and that was no good. So I may have to pull this out and put it back in because the two hots are against each other and we've got negative, positive, negative, positive. 
So if I want that to be correct, I have to undo one of these has to come out because there's no way I, I it'll always it'll be negative positive positive negative I can't have that so that's gonna come out rotate go back in the same hole in that orientation when you're working with this is I kind of like projects yeah. with like limitations and restrictions like if it was just like ah, do it it's fine it's easy but you'll never be proud of it those Japanese sodomizing irons. Woo! Woohoo! I'm scared of you now. Now I'm kind of scared. 97 on her practical. That's fucking excellent. Wait, didn't I just rotate this? Okay, so now I've got positive, negative, positive, negative. So now I'm going to make sure I do positive, negative, positive, negative. I'll bring this all the way up so that it's, it's more influential on the order of the things. It doesn't matter which side, as long as it's the correct way. So when I eventually get it soldered on again, we're good. I wish the red stripe was visible on both sides. It's only on one side. So here's where we go. This is a positive. We don't want to start with that. We want to start with a negative. Shit, we gotta make sure we're on this. We gotta make sure we're on the same team here, boys, which we're not. So which way does this start positive? It doesn't. It starts negative, positive, negative, positive. So, negative. wow, I have to actually pull out, how do I fix that? Because currently, if I want it to be two and two, this whole wire would have to be reversed to go there. And then th this whole, I have to reverse these, both these wires to come out and rotate. Wow. What a pain in the ass this is. I'm gonna pull one out, rotate that around, and then put this back in. Wow, I'm just, this is like, I'm, I think I know what I'm doing. I think I know what I'm doing. You know what? Burp. So I basically pulled one entirely out, soldered it on there so I had plenty of room to move, slid it up the top, made sure that it, nothing was overlapping or doing anything stupid, and now we've got it so that it, boom, it fit over like that. And the last one was perfect. It went in there perfect. There's not much over fucking solder. There's nothing protecting these from grounding out, which bothers me a little bit. Um, I could have had heat shrink up the wires a little bit, just to, just like a little half inch piece of very small heat shrink, just slide it up like a sleeve. I didn't do that. I don't see anything touching itself. And there wouldn't be that much stress in this. Like that's far apart, that's fine. That's far apart, that's fine. This one, actually they're all pretty far apart. What you can do, and actually I might do, is I might take the, the wires I stripped and try to cut them, cut the actual insulation off these mica wires. Let's see if I can do that, because it's really thick. So the thicker it is, the easier it's gonna be to do what I'm trying to do right now, which is basically strip the inside and make like a little, a little grabby cover like that, like it put around. It's just a matter of cutting that to length now. Because about half that would be perfect. So and they don't have to be glued in place or anything. We're just gonna just gonna put them and I only have to put them around every other one because it's gonna insulate the first one's never gonna touch the third one. So the first, second, and third, we gotta wrap the second one. So we're just gonna put this around the second one. Right there. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Zeus is a fucking he's a electrical engineer as of right now. So now that's got a piece wrapped around it, so it can't possibly touch. As long as we get this slid up and it doesn't move it out of place. I can actually cut it even shorter than it is. All right, so there's one. And then the fourth one, we'll just put one on the fourth one, which is the other half of the thing we just cut. And the fourth one, we could actually just get in there with a the goddamn pliers and pull it around if we really felt like it. Which I still don't have pliers, like actual pliers. But there, that's officially... Dunzo. That is the done is zo on this unit. So let's slop this down. It actually has to stay centered in this. Um, the little lock button. This is the spring for it. So we're gonna put the lock button down and put the spring down and then slide this bitch in. We are we are facing the front, and now I'm gonna slide this up, making sure not to fuck up anything too bad. And then rotate. Six, 
discs and you'll hear this sound. No, actually you won't hear that sound because this would, would normally go click, 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 as it's clicking in there and locking it, but this is too thick for that. So there we are, we've, that's it, we're done essentially. Um, totally didn't remember which one is which. However, the wires are so thick, there's no chance for them to go from one and two and rotate. So this is one and two, which was left plus and minus. I posted that to the Twitch fam. Hold on. We're going to get to test this today. Uh, fuck is Twitch fam. Opie Avenue. Is that Twitch fam? No. Okay. So let's see. Yeah. Pin one is left plus and pin two is left minus, which makes this our left lead and the other one our right lead. So shutting everything off here. This is left. I mean, we'll be able to test that with FUBAR and just be like left, right, left, right. Do I want to braid it? Because let's see, which one is marked? The right one is actually one we marked. I don't believe I actually, I didn't even intend to do that. So there's R and there's L. So I would have been fine either way. Yeah, I don't like the way this is like double wires. So now I'm going to do a thing that, oof, this is really going to just, just grind my gears. Be careful ripping those apart that you don't peel the shield off like one of them and then expose it and then make it real bad. What are you doing, Mark? Yeah, no. I, I won't be able to live with it just being too, like, dainty wires. I'm going to make this a nice. This is going to be a nice. And then we have the heat shrink there, which I think will fit over all four. We'll put that, like, six inches. Actually, I got to keep it so I could separate it on wider amps. So maybe it'll be a twin twist after, like, the first two feet. Okay, so now these are marked. See the white marks there, the silver marks there? Those are the right channel. So now, how do I braid this? One, two, then over two, then back one, then over one, and then back. Th I don't know. I'll look up a way to braid a four wire because I'm pretty sure that's... There's a video on the YouTubes that's going to teach me how to make this beautiful and not this. Although this would still work, but we're going we're gonna to make it good. Let me, let me learn. Quick, Mr. Wizard, download me Taekwondo. Pause the Taekwondo learning. So after I, I shut the camera off, I w literally pulled the wire and it pulled this back like a quarter inch. So it was actually loose in here because we're missing that black plastic piece. So I'm gonna attempt to modify this black plastic piece to work in here, um, to hold the, the unit forward, or I'm gonna have to put hot glue or something to keep it from sliding. It definitely will not, the whole thing is designed to take a, a small, this is designed to take a small, wire and wrap around a small wire and then it squeezes down. So these three end bits are supposed to get squished into the thing. Unfortunately, we're using, we literally removed the part it would squish against and we're using four massive cables. So I'm just gonna remove these. God bless these wire cutters, by the way. One, two, it's like clipping toenails, three. And this is very flexible plastic. So I'm able to open it almost completely flat. So now, it was like that, so I'm going to try to make it so it stays in. So I'm going to wrap this around this, and then slide this up, and that will hold, and then put this in and see if that makes any bit of difference. Four, five. It did. Perfect. Okay, so now that's not sliding out. I need to move. So I like big, loose garbage cans with no lids because you could just do that and then go whoop. And then miss, of course, at least one piece because it's rubberized. I make it fly over. Um, to YouTube to look up how to braid. Braiding with four strings, I guess, or ropes. Lexi Tiger Lily did fish gel braid tutorial. She, it's real simple from what she explained, and I'm, I've started it, and it looks okay, and I don't care if it looks fantastic, I just care if it looks okay. Um, I am gonna wanna get a piece of the heat shrink ready for when it's fucking done, so I can just slip it on there. So, before I forget where I'm going, here's what it looks like so far. It's real fucking simple. So, four wires. The left most goes over once, and then the right most goes over two of them. And then the left one goes over once, and the right one goes over two of them. And then the left one goes over once, and the right one goes over two of them. 
that's that's it. That's the simplest shit I've ever heard. And I had to look it up and left over once and right over twice and left over once and right over twice and left over once and right over twice. This, this fucking heavy bass is paying off already. Left over once, right over twice, left over once, right over twice, left over once, right over twice. Don't fuck this up, Steve. Left over once, right over twice. Anyone can do this shit. This is dummy, this is dummy symbol. Left over once, right over twice. I don't know how to end this and like how much length. Like that's probably good because in, in case you need to go to like both sides of a fucking big amp. So I'm gonna hold that. I'm gonna let you finish, but I actually ain't gonna let you finish. So I'm just gonna pull this taut and then try to slide this on there. You can see our discrepancy in length of our as we slide the heat shrink over there, which is the perfect size heat shrink, by the way, you're welcome. And I did bring up the uh, the torch to, to push it. So do something like that. Yeah, that's fine, perfect. I like it, done. Left over once, right over twice, that's it, done. Sexy, sexy fucking thing. Don't wanna know nothing else, I'll slide this up a little bit more. I do have a heat gun, but I'm just gonna do this. Heat sort of evenly around it with the torch. Sorry, baby, burning things. Don't melt the fucking wire. I can feel the heat hitting me in the hands. We're just trying to get an even shrinkage on this. Don't go near the real edges, by the way, because then you'll get to the actual mica cable, and God knows if we're gonna melt the mica cable. Now we could do like edges, edges, a little more intense. Wait for your thing to shut off. It's like 30 seconds delayed. So now, that looks good. That looks good. So now what I'd probably do is I'll do a twist thing and get some smaller thing for the ends. Which means I gotta go back to the basement. Fuck is my phone? I'm myself in the nose. Um, uh, I brought up this specific type of heat shrink, which I have this one container of, and it's basically adhesive lined. So, I'm gonna mark my left and rights using red and black. I'll try to make them the same length, but it doesn't have to be perfect. Oh, that's about it. And adhesive line means when we heat it up, it's not just gonna shrink, it's gonna activate a heat melting adhesive, and when it cools, that's it. Shit ain't gonna slide out. Now, my marks for left and right are here, which I'm going to assume are correct before we test this. And if they're not, then it'll just always be wired permanently backwards. And the way we're gonna do this, so this is the right channel. And I'm obsessive compulsive, so I'm gonna spin them opposite. But you don't twist them. You're literally lifting one up and just putting it over the other side. In fact, you could even put a little bit of an opposite twist on there so that it's like, oh, oh, my, uh, it, it wants to be back to straight, but it may not be. Also, we have s actually pretty good as far as the, the distance away. These terminals should never be more than like a few inches, so we could actually do pretty, pretty close to the ends. Like that would still work. I don't want to make them like on top of each other, but within two inches will probably be solid. And it's the same thing I like to heat up evenly all around before we actually start trying to shrink it. Just get it warm and then we let it, oh, if we see flames, we're doing it too slow. This is a very small piece and we're working around in circles. All right, actually shut off relatively. We're gonna hold that there for a second while the adhesive dries and cools off. Because once we let go of this, it's gonna try to spin back and the glue should hold it and the tension on these, there's no tension. They just, they, the, it, the op side of the wire just went up all the way around. We didn't twist it. So yeah, that's, that's good. So now the other side, we twisted that clockwise. We're gonna do this anti-clockwise. As the Brits would say, 
And remember, you're not twisting it, you're lifting one over the other. Otherwise it won't stay. So they get IM cables to stay normal. We want to try to make it the exact same amount of twists. Which looks correct. Let's get our black boy on there. Up, up. Twist, 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 twist. How far up is our... See, this one's a little bit shorter because we discussed that, so this is going to be up a little bit further. Again, we, we all planned out. Just presume it's all planned out. The best thing you could do is dilute yourself into thinking that you everything you did wrong was absolutely to plan and you're the greatest. It's great. It's a great confidence booster. I meant to do that. Because amplifiers never have the things perfectly lined up. I'm rotating myself instead of the wire to keep it from twisting improperly. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that's that's hot. Apparently flames are hot. Check my fizz zone. All right. That's it. We've made our thing. Our thing has been made. We have to now go test this on a speaker amp. I'll take some pictures of it up here though. This, that, looks, that looks sexual in nature. There you go. Ooh, nice and flexible with our, with our, with our very basic weave. Thank you, Lily. Wait, wait, was it Lexi? Lexi Tiger Lily, not Lily Tiger Lexi. So, boom. Which headphones do we blow up with this first is the question. See how the lighting looks on this. Good, good enough. So, uh, the amp I built this for is this one, which is a new Emotiva which um, if you've watched my video, that <laughs> sucks for a lot of reasons, but sounds amazing. So this already has the page 15 mod where I can use the quarter inch in the front to power headphones. So I just plug the quarter inch to balance adapter there. And now I'm gonna plug in, before I plug the power in, because remember you can't shut the power off in this unit. <laughs> uh, so now I'm gonna plug in, right front is here, boom, boom. And then left front is here. Boom, boom. So now I've got my adapter. So I'll be able to compare the two, whether this is actually truly giving you full or if having a balanced connection to the two grounds here makes a difference. It might not, it might, who knows. All I know is having one shorter than the other. Look how beautiful that is now, because one is shorter. We did that on purpose, I'm telling you. Um, the two headphones I've pulled out are uh, the RD, R7DX high femins with my um, periapt cable. The reason, these are $100. Like they were on sale for $100, and they went to $150, and they're back to $100. If they blow up, they blow up. Um, we're going to pick some, we've got to go to an actual folder with actually quiet music or well-recorded music. This is a Chesky Jazz, Chesky Record should be good. Nothing here should be like extremely loud, just in case, just in case. Um, let's turn this on by just fucking plugging it in. It's on auto. I have the uh, gray tech on the fix switch, so it can't go to fixed. It, uh, uh, it turned on and it just detected, oh, music's playing. I uh, got the DAC plugged in, which is the Danifrips Aries 2. We're gonna turn this knob for a while, just for a while. I could also, if I wanted to lower the volume on FUBAR, I'm not going to, we're real quiet here. We'll do the front first. Listen for explosions. Don't plug it all the way where it locks and you can't pull it out without it, or hold the button down. We're just gonna listen to see if that headphone explodes. No, no explosion, okay. I'm now gonna put it on my head, but not over my ears, because that's another suicidal tendency. We're gonna put it above my ears. So if it went to 900 decibels right now, it'd be loud, but it wouldn't actually kill me. Okay, we're playing. This is Carlos Her Herdita. Chica pen. And I'm gonna get it to like, like not loud. It's just, okay, that's playing back off of my ears. And we're gonna unplug this. That should not play until I unplug this. Louder. 
Hold on, I'm gonna lower this. Oof. Oof, good oof, not bad oof. That was good oof, hold on. It's quieter. So even page 15 mod, it's not as much power as coming out the back. Oh my God, these sound amazing. Let's do a left right check in case I'm dumb. Uh, headphone demo, default. Left and right are playing correctly. They don't sound out of phase. They got good centering. God, these headphones are so worth a hundred fucking dollars. I'm ups I'm upset. I didn't sell all seven hundred of them that were there. Drop was like, "Look, we know we fucked you on the eight XX. We have seven hundred of these in stock. Sell them all." Oh my god. So now this amp will stay there, wired up. And this will come out from the back to the front. And then I'll probably build another one of these. Because this wasn't that hard. And I know the fuck arounds and tri tri trips now. I can probably build another one of these in about 30 to 35 minutes. Oh my god, yes. And paused. Even on these headphones, which are not that hard to drive. The slightest bit of background noise. Like, that's, that's clean. Alright, moving on to DOS Big Boys. That feels loose. Uh, DOS Big Boys. I, I didn't bring the Argons down here because I don't want to blow my Argons, but these are the T60s, which the Argons are based on, which could always use more bass. Um, if, I, if I have my multimeter, if I did a continuity test across the grounds, if those grounds are touching, then you could plug an adapter into this and use a quarter inch on it instead of the front. But I'm not going to because I has a quarter inch out in the front, which is fine. Quieter, for obvious reasons. Oh, we can come out of Chesky Jazz now. Shuffle all music, sort by name, Dark Knight Rises, Mind If I Cut In. Ooh, low end. Mind If I Cut In has those really sweeping highs. Like those sharp sibling highs. Oh, this is good. This is good. This is better than it was out of the headphone out, I think. Well, I mean, we could just we could just test that right now by going in, out, in. That actually didn't change the volume as much as it did on the other headphones when I did it. I don't know if it's remembering the settings per. Like here, let's make this real loud. Like it's real loud. All right, now I'm gonna plug this in. Unplug this. No, it's still real loud. It's it's real loud. I went up with it. Oh, those T60s hurt a little bit. Not from the amp, from this song and them being T60s. Whoa, God. Yeah, no, this is a solid fucking amplifier. I don't see. Here's the thing. This is what I don't understand. They could just provide the, 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 this output in the front. They could just give, give me this. Give me this in the front. Why is every amplifier, just speaker amplifier, why is it always a fucking quarter inch? A bad thing a chance has lost is just... That's... That's good. This is a worthwhile endeavor. I wasn't sure. Just for this amplifier. Like, I have the two monoblock emotivas there. If I build another one, like this one might be... The problem with the one upstairs is the permanent resident on my desk. Because I have a permanent amp that I want to use it on. The problem with this one is I'm probably going to leave it permanently on this amp in that stack. Which, by the way, here's another one of those tools. Remember, I got a five-pack? So that stays like... I... You yeah, know, this is a... There's something about a speaker amp. A good, clean speaker amp. And its ability to access infinite power. This was 100% worth it. I'm so glad I found that girl to do the weave. There was a guy I found, and he was like, it was like, oh, what the hell are they, like, Paracord Central. Was like, and he had a thick accent, and he explained it in the worst fucking way I've ever fucking seen. And I was like, he did it for like one, he did like one pass. And then he's like, and that's how you do it. Now do the rest of it. And he cut to like the fully thing done. I'm like, what are you doing? 
there's no dislikes on YouTube. So I saw the likes, but I couldn't see the dislikes, and I'm sure there was a million of them. Um, but yeah, no, that girl was just like, here's you do. It's like one over. It, uh, literally, it's the easiest thing I've ever seen. Four wires come down. This one goes over once. This one goes over, goes over twice, and then you repeat, and then you have this. Can't ask for nicer and easier than that. So I'm gonna fucking plug other headphones into this now and enjoy it. Um, or get this wire to permanently. I haven't used the rack in a while. The rack was sort of not retired, but put on hiatus while I was testing the Singzer, because the Singzer replaced the uh, Pi Hat, and the Pi Hat was there and ran the whole rack, and then the Pi Hat got disabled because I was using that, so everything was on the desk. Now everything's nothing's on the desk except for that. That's fucking good. That is fucking good. We did a we did good here, boys and girls. This is this is a solid piece of equipment. Now I got to contact Mike and be like, hey. How how talented are your uh, Chinese workers? Can they m make me one of these? Because that should be on ZBoombox.com, which is where my merch is. I would love to sell one of those. I'd probably charge, like, no shit, $100. Sorry. If I was making them myself, I'd charge $200. But if I was making uh, small uh, foreign children make it, probably be $100. But it's absolutely fucking worth it. Fucking worth it. Anyway, I'm done. Thank you for stopping by. P uh, Patreon subscribes for all that shit, I guess. It's the second channel, so I don't usually do that, but support me because the guy that cut, the kid that cuts my lawn, not my lawn lawn, I cut my lawn lawn, but I have like around the whole fucking pastures for the horses. So he used to charge me $40 for the last two years. Showed up today with his father. They both were cutting grass. He's like, no, nah, it's 60 now. And I'm like, do it. So 50% increase in cutting my thing, but he said gas prices are up too. And I'm like, I guess. You are running lawnmowers and run gas, all right, whatever. So paid him 60 for two people, perfectly legitimate amount of money. But I'm a charger for this if, if it's, oh. Oh. Oh, look at the sex in that. I love it. I get that wallpaper in the, what was the last review I did on this desk? Was it you? No, it was two. Two girls. Two girls. I don't remember. Someone will know in the comments. Ask them, where, where did the Belfast and... Enterprise wallpaper come from. Was it the JDS Labs? It might have been the JDS Labs. I think it might have been the JDS Labs.